hello i'll be showing you guys what materials i use to achieve my easy crinoline brighter bow yes here we have uh, a crinoline this crinoline is 39 to 40 um, inches long that's the length of the crinoline i have my tape my measuring tape which i use to measure my crinoline i have uh, sorry i have my scissors which i use in cutting scissors is in fact a must have because you use it all the time so you don't need to keep it far away from where you are now i'll ha i have my hot uh, gum uh, machine this is it i have my embellishing materials i'll be using these beautiful flowers to embellish my my um rose my crinoline rose fascinator i'll be using this as well these feathers to also do the embellishment i have my U, um, usu gum i have my alice band right here i'll either use an alice band just depending on preference or i'll use my pin to help um the rose to adhere or the um, fascinator to adhere to the head i'll also be using my sewing machine which i use to like hold the sides of the crinoline so that it doesn't because crinoline is in it's very slippery so i always like to like sew it sew the edges down so that it doesn't um, untie with time i'll have um, to use my needle my needle and my fishing line yeah i'm using a big fishing line because i'll be using it on a crinoline and it's not going to show so i'm using the fishing line in the number 050 millimeters so these are the things i'll be working with today this is already i'll show you a sample of the bow i already did um of oh, sorry the rose i already did this is a rose i did already I'll show you how I came about this. It's very, very easy. So I would like you guys to try this. You can wear it to church. You can use it for your bridesmaids. This one is a command for a client, for her bridesmaids. So I just decided to share this video with you guys while doing this um, this command. So I'll measure 40 centimeters, 20, 39 to 40 centimeters of my crinoline. So after measuring that, I'll just start. I'll take the edges of my crinoline like this. I'll hold it together. And now what I'll do is I already have my fishing line here. I'm about to do is to secure this edge because crinoline has a tendency of like, as I said, it has a tendency of unfolding. So what I'll do is I'll take this, the end of the fishing line, not the side that has the needle. I'll wrap on the crinoline. As I'm wrapping on the crinoline, I'll take my UH, uh, UHU glue, I'll apply a bit, a tiny bit on the crinoline, the top of the crinoline. Why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I want this edge not to unfold. So this UHU glue is going to just help the edge to stay in place. So this is what I do to secure the edge. As you can see, now it's well secured in a way that it can't untie. So what I'll do now next, after having tied the edge, with my fishing line, I'll take the thread and go through the fishing line. If you can see very well, I'm going through the fishing line to secure the edge of that crinoline and prevent it from unfolding. So after doing that, I'll just um, pleat the crinoline into two. I'll take the two edges and just pleat, like bringing the two edges together and start passing my needle in a zigzag zigzag pattern i'll just pass my needle in a zigzag pattern my needle and my fishing line i'll just pass as you can see i'm just basically repeating so just watch and see what i do i'm doing this to the end of the crinoline the end of this crinoline what i'll do right now is just to pull pull this thread as I'm pulling, you can see it's forming the rose. It's forming the rose. I'm just pulling the thread and it's forming the rose. Just pull well. Let it be nice and firm. Now I'll come to this edge right here. I'll hold it in place. And while it's very firm, I would now take this, this fishing line and see tie the, this other end 
of the crinoline very well. I'll repeat the same procedure. I'll take my UHU um, glue and just put a tiny bit at that edge. Then press it so the strands of the crinoline don't unfold or untie. Or I don't know if I'm making sense right here. But guess with the with the video you understand. I'll go in between. Look at what I do. This is a fishing line. I don't sew on top and I don't sew beneath. I go in between the fishing line and pass my needle. I repeat the same process about two to three times and I'm sure that my crinoline edge is well secured and it wouldn't untie with time. Crinoline is very, very tricky to work with because it could just untie. Imagine <laughs> imagine your rose just untying in the middle of, of a wedding. Can you imagine the scenario? That's not going to be fair. So after doing this, this is what I have. After having pulled the crinoline, this is what I have. Now to form this bowl, this is a, <laughs> a, a rose I've already um, produced. To form this type of roses, as you can see here, what I do is to just take the edge of this crinoline. I will not cut. I'm still leaving the needle right there. This is the needle and the fishing line. I'll just fold and try to fold in a circular motion in a circular like circular direction or let's say in a clockwise direction i'll just fold in a clockwise direction then take this thread and fishing line sorry take the needle and the fishing line once more and go in between just hold that edge that end that you secured let it go through the crinoline come again from beneath into the center come from the center again go to the end beneath and come again from here beneath and go back to the center you repeat this process about three to four times to get this rose well secured so i'll do that again and it's at the bottom right here that i'm going to create a knot I'm going to just create a knot here. And now that it is firm and secure, you can see how the rose turned out. I'm just going to cut the excess fishing line with my scissors. And this is our amazing rose. I'm going to embellish these ro roses and I'll let you see how I embellish them. Yes, I'll be moving over to the embellishment of my crinoline rose. This is the rose I already created. This is the flower I'll be using. These are the feathers. I have my pin right here and this will serve as the base of my fascinator. So what I'll do basically is that I'm going to take my scissors, run it over my flowers so that it gives it that curvy nature that beautifies the fascinator. I'll do that for about three to four feathers. As you can see, when I curve it, I put it at sight. I do the next. I keep. Okay, these flowers are coming. This, I'm um, sorry, these feathers come from this, so I just removed some few because I don't want to use all. So, this is how curvy they are now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my hot um, glue, I'll just put some at the edge of the flower of the feather. I don't know why I keep calling it flowers. Sorry, guys, I'll put some glue at the edge of the feather and just stick it. Oops, be careful and just stick it into the fascinator. I'll do the same just watch me repeat the process it's basically the same thing okay after I haven't done this, done that, this is what I have. 
so i'll continue with embellishing i'll take this beautiful rose as well i'll just put some glue to it to the bottom and stick it into the middle part of the fascinator so it closes up the um, fishing line we use so this is how it looks right now so beautiful now i have to work with the base of the fascinator i already cut this in a circular form so it's going to fit directly to the fascinator so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add some glue to it i would like i like using the dark part because it wouldn't peep through the fascinator when you use the whitish part at times it shows through the fascinator so i'm just putting sufficient amount of glue be careful with your hand and i'll just stick at the center of the fascinator creating the base so to make it adhere more i'm going to turn it like inside out and leave it in that form for a while so that the glue can really adhere to the crinoline i'll leave it like that for a while that's i could leave this for about two to three minutes while pressing as well so it really adheres afterwards i'm going to turn it again and there we have our base the base of the fascinator it's not quite dry <laughs> See that that this mannequin head is a beautiful bridesmaid who is about or a bride or I don't know whosoever is about to pop this fascinator on for any event. You could make this fascinator in any color of your choice to just suit your dress. It might be pink, it might be blue, it might be white whatever color yellow ash whatever color you want you could as well make this fascinator with a unique color then you embellish with other feathers that have different colors just to suit your dressing so now here comes a mannequin i'm going to be popping this fascinator on so you see how beautiful it is on the mannequin head so as you can see this is how wonderful the fascinator turned out to be so you can thumbs up this video like share and also comment it's very easy to do please try this back at home and get back to us ciao